So if I turn that on, hey, I did it. So, coat time breakdown week six. This is going to be a breakdown of 70 SAS decks, 75 SAS decks, sorry. So today we're looking at 75 SAS decks uh, along the uh, coat 10 pool. The average is 73.6 with an average arc of 62.17, 15, 15.4% uh, higher than the average, which is really interesting. Again, showing that people are more moving into faster, more linear decks, forging keys quickly. When you're looking at the 75, uh, 50, 30 number pips on high, which uh, right, which is less. Oh, uh, like in previous sets, so raw amber might matter less than sass. Fair enough. Hey, uh, uh, Andrew, bad week for you. Zero or three. Need to look deep into ourselves. I mean, you guys have been having a hell of a week, if I remember. A hell of a run so far, so the water. But good, yeah, good fundamentals. I've been watching and playing a lot of Storybook Brawl, as I've been mentioning over the last few weeks. And one of the people was put in there was basically saying, your hero powers and what you select there shouldn't matter as much if you have good fundamentals of the character, of making your build, if you know which characters you're looking for. Uh, your hero powers can be built around it, but it, as with anything, any sport, any uh, study, anything like that, Mastering your fundamentals is key. Doing something and repeating it and playing something or learning something until it's as natural as breathing is the best way to master something because it becomes like second nature. Yeah, you're going to blame inscription coming out. I've heard inscription is a really good horror card game. It is something I've put on my uh, Steam wish list, but uh, I've been a little bit distracted to play it with the SS, with the Stubborn Brawl October tournament that happened over the weekend. I'm playing a lot of go uh, Goose Goose Duck, because Goose Goose Duck is just a lot of fun to play. But I've heard, no, I've heard nothing but good things about Inscription. It looks creepy as hell. Uh, and I can't, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a shout. It look, I'll give it, I'm gonna give it a shout when I get a chance. It looks really good. Uh, I'll probably wait till Sunday when it's actually Halloween. I might sit down and actually give it a proper play. Uh, moving on here, uh, looking at composition decks, a lot more actions, eight percent higher than the average. Uh, now let's move on to comparing seventy five SAS against the gold averages. A lot higher in amber control and expected amber effective power and creature protection. Good also we're seeing. At the 75 sass, more moving towards getting through your deck quickly, getting the amber up to six, and making sure your opponent can stay off six. And this is a great upturn I've like, I like to see. Disruption has been quite low all the way through this. And I said, as we go up in the sass, we will see disruption go up. And at 75, we finally proved me right there. As a 30, as, although it's not too, it's only like 1% different. At uh, 33 percent, uh, there's only one point different, but 33 percent gap in the disruption is absolutely huge, and I think that's going to be represented when we look at the house breakdown, as this will uh, dramatically increase. Let's have a look at the set breakdowns. AOA started to really diminish it. Look at that, at 75 AOA is only at 10 percent. With Mass Mutation and Dark Times really coming up. Kota still taking uh, up a big chunk at half, but with Mass Mutation has actually overtaken them. And World's Clyde taking up 20%. So, eight, I mean, you look at almost double the amount of Dark Times as that AOA. So, as AOA gets higher, as we get higher, the SAS AOA becomes a lot less popular. And if the trend follows next week when we look at. The 80 SAS decks, I imagine we're going to see AOA getting even smaller again with a lot less uh, there. But let's have a look at the house breakdown. We see an increase in this, that is really good. And we see a decrease in Untamed, which is really interesting. Untamed, not known well for its amber control. Key increase cost, yes. Uh, you see quite a bit of that in Kota, Dark Tidings. A little bit of mass mutation, stampede, mar uh, marut cling. You got your key cheats, but when we saw like with the numbers, I kind of expected this to be coming up. 
is the case. So we've seen the increase of dis. We've seen Mar as AOA goes down, we've seen Mars go down. As AOA goes down, we've seen Bromino go down, and we've seen everyone else rise up. But the really interesting thing is 18.3% D Dark Tidings, but only 3.3% Unfathomable. So Unfathomable, although really powerful house, not really representing itself as a disc replacement. Because you got to think, you know, a quarter of this pie is made up by, well, a fifth of this pie is made up by Dark Tidings. But all, even if you just look at a fifth of that pie, that's still only 3.3% you know, of that entire Unfathomable that's made up there. So out of 100% of Unfathomable decks, only, three, only one or two have actually got it. Which is really interesting to see. And as see, of course, shadows is going to increase, but you know, the oh, the three main houses we've seen in the last few uh, breakdowns have decreased as the others have increased. So it's now getting much closer to fifty percent of the pool being uh, untamed shadows. And I think when we get to the eighty next week, we're going to see that we're going to see untamed and dis switch here. That's my prediction. I'm uh, I'm calling it now. We're going to see untamed and dis switch position here. And that and this is going to dramatically increase. Oh, we might even see logos come up because logos has fallen below this, which is absolutely huge. 